This is Mark from Team How To, and we're teaching the masses how to. Hey guys, it's Mark from Team How To. Today I'll be discussing the amplification effect in Audacity. My goal is to give a simple overview of the effect in the first few minutes of the tutorial for those of you that just want an absolute basics understanding of it and how to plug it in and go. And then I want to dive deeper into the surprisingly more complex options for those who want a better understanding of how, where, and when to use amplification to achieve the best possible results for your audio. Before I get started, I just want to thank the YouTuber Cheery Giggles for requesting this video. I appreciate the feedback and I'm glad to help out with any of these kind of requests, so feel free to request any if you have any. I'll throw a link to Cheery Giggles channel in my description if you want to check her out. It looks like she's doing some fun stuff. So in case you don't know the purpose of the amplification effect, it's basically to change the volume of a selected audio track or tracks. So let's move on over here real quick to Audacity and let's get started. At its absolute most basic, there's a few things we should know. When you're amplifying, you want to select whatever part you're amplifying. So if you want to amplify the entire thing, you could hit it over here, left click, or you could just, if I just wanted to amplify this, I could amplify it like that. These things are obvious. What may not be as obvious is you could amplify positively or negatively. So if I wanted to take some amplification out of this, I could do the same. Uh, or if I wanted to amplify it up louder, which is normally what people want to do, I could do it that way. What it's going to do is going to raise by default to a zero decibel. And what that means basically is if you look at this, I can stretch this out and let you see a little better. This is coming up to somewhere around three, minus three decibels. So if I were to amplify this at its default value, it would take the highest peak, which is this one at minus three dB, and it would take it all the way up to the zero dB. So that's gonna be its default. And so what it would do is overall, it would amplify the across, but no more than this one here. So I'll show you just real quick to get you an idea of what I mean. We hit the effect amplify and you can see these defaults in here and what it's going to show here is what the new peak will be and that's zero db again that's the default now what i do if i hit ok you can see just like i said now this one's up at zero and it didn't do a whole lot because i had that little peak in there and what can sometimes be confusing people go in to amplify something and they hit amplify but it doesn't do anything because they've already peaked out at zero db i'll give you another example of that let me get rid of this Test one, two, three, test one, two, three. Now you notice when I did the number one, two, three, when I hit three, it's already peaked out. So when I come in to amplify, nothing's gonna happen. You say, oh, well, look, I amplified, but this is showing you how much it's gonna amplify, which is nothing. So if I do that, nothing changes. Now you might also say, well, hey, Mark, why, why can't I just move the slider up to a higher decibel? So I, you can do that, sure. But what happens is as I bring this up, it's going to bring up everything, including this. And the only way it's going to let me do that is if I have this allow clipping checked. See, I can't do it if I wanted to bring it up that high. And there's a darn good reason they won't let you do that, because if you're clipping, what you're doing is tearing up the higher ends of these spectrums. So if I was to say allow clipping and I go ahead and hit OK here, see what just happened here? Now let me show you. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. That sounds really bad. I hit Control Z and reset that. So that's why it's sometimes important to do a few other steps before amplification or in tandem with some other operations such as compression or even possibly normalize. These are a couple of other things that a lot of times I'm going to use anytime I'm doing one or the other. And I'm going to get in a lot deeper to what that is, but I wanted I promise I would keep this first part basic just to let you know how and how and where to use it. So now that we have the basic of basics out of the way, let's start getting into what exactly all the different features are and how to use normalize and just to get a lot of these other ideas into play so you can make it sound as good as possible. We'll come back up here to effect and we'll go to amplify and I'll just kind of tell you a little bit more about this. We've got the amplification dB and that's basically going to tell you what it's going to be once it's done. And obviously you can listen to the preview button and if you need to just save presets or use some other factory presets, you can go that route. The only other thing that's noteworthy, again, is this allow clipping, which I've explained. If you do allow it, you, you, you risk messing up some of the rest of the sound. So it's ideal, in my opinion, if you can, if you can 
not do the clipping. But there are some cases where in a minor way you would never know. But So there you go. And like I said before, if you wanted to take some out of it, we could bring the slider down. And now you'll notice that this whole wave will shrink. See, there you go. And test one, two, three, test one, two, three. And so you can see we're not we're not risking any clipping or anything going on there. It's just bringing in the, the values a bit. So as I mentioned a bit earlier, the amplifier and the normalizer are very similar effects, uh, but they do have some minor subtle differences. Normalize has its own option for correcting DC offset, which I'll, I'll explain a little more what DC offset is uh, in a bit. Uh, Amplify has its own option to enter the volume change to be applied to allow the clipping above a d 0 dB, which I already went into a little bit earlier, so you kind of have an idea what that's about. If you were just going to apply a level change, the normalize effect offers the option to normalize maximum amplitude to a chosen level. The amplify effect offers two interdependent options, meaning that the change to one changes the other, uh, the amplification dB and new peak dB amplitude. Uh, the slider, you can use that to slide it in it. it. It changes them at the same time. One affects the other. Let me just show you how this normalized feature works. I'm going to get rid of this. We'll make a, a single track here. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing. So you see what I did there is I made I put in some quieter stuff and then I put in some just speaking normal type stuff. That way we'd get a, a, a better idea of how it's going to react to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to control C, control V. And I have the exact same track twice, but I'm going to do so I'm going to move this one over here and we'll make some changes to it with normalize and then we'll see how it how it looks or changes uh, as we go along. So I will highlight this one. I'll come to the effect normalize and we'll go through these really quick. So we have uh, the remove DC offset check and the remove DC offset basically I said I'd get into it earlier so here we go. When this box is checked normalize attempts to remove DC offset in the selection by entering a waveform on the zero amplitude level. Technically it does this by finding the average of all the sample values in the selection then subtracting the average values from the sample. Removing any DC offset and preventing it occurring in your hardware in the first place is important. DC offset can cause clicks and distortions and limits the headroom available for normalization, thus restricting the loudness that can be achieved. To be specific, DC offset is a mean amplitude displacement from zero. In Audacity, it can be seen as an offset of the recorded waveform away from the zero point. DC offset is a potential source of clicks if you're absolutely sure that your uh, tracks do not have any offset, you can uncheck that and it will marginally speed up the process, but it's not enough for me to care about. Uh, uh, technically speaking, if you're using a newer machine, odds are you're not dealing with that. Uh, the later machines, Windows operating systems, they, they take care of all that for you. It shouldn't be an issue. If there is an issue, there's a chance it's in your drivers or potentially your, your audio card or whatever it could be glitchy. So for me I'll just leave this checked. So next we have the normalize peak amplitude to 0 dB and that is again what's going to happen if we were to use the amplify we would then be amplifying to 0 dB by default and as I mentioned this one will not allow clipping so you have to have to basically go with a 0 dB because entering a positive value is not allowed, if I were to add a 1 here and try to go beyond that, it just grays out the OK button, so you can't do that. And uh, as it turns out, the negative 1 is the actual default that it starts with, and they like to do that because it, it, it uh, gives you a little bit of headroom and allows that maximum amplification without clipping and, and to give you just a little bit of extra grace there but you can change it to zero if you prefer to get the absolute maximum out of it. Next we have the normalize stereo channels independently and it's a lot like it sounds. When this box is uh, unchecked, which is by default, the normalize will work on the channels of stereo tracks as a pair and change the levels to both channels by the same amount. 
Use this if your audio is already correctly balanced, as this mode will preserve its original stereo balance. When this box is checked, Normalize will adjust the amplitudes separately for the left and right channels of a stereo track. This is useful for correcting stereo recordings, which may be unbalanced, as long as the significant clicks are removed first. And as for the sake of consistency, if you select multiple tracks at once and apply that effect, it will normalize that amplitude across the entire spectrum of all of those waveforms, giving you a more uniform, equal sound throughout. And so that's what I would suggest. So now let's just take a real quick look at what it actually does. First thing I want to do is I'm going to change this back to zero where I like it. And what that's going to do is then offset this to an absolute zero, which it's almost almost there now already, but we'll go ahead and show you. So you can see this this brought this up to here, and then it's brought some of these levels up as well. You're probably not going to hear much difference in the two sounds, so I won't bother. Uh, that brings me to my next point, and that is that my personal preference is to use the compression when I'm trying to get my levels to be way more consistent. If I have lots of lows in there and highs, that's when I definitely want to use the compressor. So let's go into that effect. I'll open the compressor effect up. And what the compressor effect does is it reduces the dynamic range of audio. One of the main purposes of the reducing of the dynamic range is to permit the audio to be further amplified without clipping than would be otherwise possible. Therefore, by default, the compressor amplifies audio as much as possible after compression. The resultant increase in average or RMS levels can be useful for radio played in a noisy environment, such as a car or a speech, or to make a distant voice sound a lot closer than it is. Now I have a comprehensive video that goes into this compressor, and it really goes through each one of these levels in detail, it explains everything, so I'm not going to go into that now. I'll put a link right up here in the right corner. But for now, we'll just show you what how it works and how it how it takes effect. If I, I will tell you this, if you don't check this, it won't do the compression. So let's go ahead and check that and it'll show how it's going to look. So I hit OK and notice how much it beefed this up and then took this as high and maxed it out at zero. So now let's control Z that uh, undo and then let's go back into that compressor effect again and I'll uncheck that and now you can see if I do OK it levels things out, but it doesn't amplify it after the fact, so it doesn't quite get the, the effect that I'm looking for. Now you could do as easily go in and go to your amplify effect after the fact and do the same, and even then you might want to go past and add, add a little bit of clipping if you so chose. So let's just say that way it'll clip that. And you can see everything through here is getting amplified. Um, the other thing we can do, which is, should be somewhat obvious and maybe the, the right answer in certain cases as far as amplifying goes, if we were just to come in here, go to the amplify effect, and we want to bring this up, let's just see, see what this is going to do. This is going to bring this up to 13.73, which is going to be huge. Look at that. So now that's going to now be even more powerful than this other stuff. So we wouldn't want to go quite that much. I'll do an undo on that. Uh, that was just for effect, but let's see if we went to amplify and brought this up, say eight or nine like that. Now you're now you're in line with the rest of what's going on. We could do one last thing. We could come in, hit this, do the amplify effect, and now we'll bring this up to the maximum amplification without any clipping. Once we've already fixed this, and now the entire thing is beefed up to a point. We'll we'll listen to both real quick. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing. So that gives you a good idea. So I think what I'll do now is give you a, a quick run through of what I would do from from the very beginning if I were going to bring in some audio and I just wanted to, to do the steps that I like to do every time yeah, to make it better. So let's just start off by recording something. Testing one, two, three. This is an audio recording. Check it out. There we go. Got a little something. Now, first thing I always like to do is I'll stretch this out. And you can see this bit of noise here. It's all the background noise. Could be a heater running, could be whatever. If you want more information on that, I have a video that addresses all of that. You can look at it up here in the right corner. I'll put a card up there to that video. But I'll show you real quick how to do that. 
uh, basically we're going to go into the effect go to noise reduction I'm going to get the noise profile what that's doing is seeing what it's trying to find to pull out of the rest so it's just getting a basic feel now we're going to hit the whole track and then we'll come back in and do noise reduction again and from here I'm going to use the defaults we go into what those are a little more in the other recording so you saw it, it did a little bit there it took a lot of noise out of here though you can see that's really clean so what I'll do now is I'll delete the, the silence at the beginning and end we'll go back in here next thing I like to do is I'll a lot of times go into my effects and I will do the equalizer if you're not aware Audacity in the most recent version upgrade they took out the equalization and they replaced it with two different things and now it's graphics EQ and filter curve they basically do all the work that the old EQ setting used to do I'll just use the filter curve and you can see these are the defaults that I've been using recently uh, so basically I'm just throwing some bass in it and I'm throwing some treble in it uh, I might want to put a little more I could bring this up a little like so I could do whatever we want to do doesn't matter let's just do that for just to have something to show you so I hit OK you can see it added the bass and the treble next thing I do is go in and normalize the entire track so we'll hit normalize we'll use the defaults that boosted everything up there next thing we're going to do is we're going to go use the compressor so we run down hit the compressor that's going to pull these up without pulling those down I go in full detail of how the compressor works and what every one of these settings do in another video and I'll put a card up here in the right corner if you want to check that out it goes into absolute depth on every one of these settings so we will use the gain after to be zero which we know is the maximum we want so it's gonna pull this stuff up even though we're already maxed out at zero here there you go you saw what it did there it pulled this stuff down pulled that stuff up compressors doing a lot so there you go that will hopefully help you understand a little better what was all going on in here and all of the variable steps you can use to sort of get a more stable thorough sound instead of just going in and amplifying and cutting off the tops and doing things that really make it sound poor using compressors and other things like that will really help and go a long way toward making the overall track sound better in the long run uh, I know that was a lot we went into hopefully you learned something I'd like to thank cheery giggles one last time for the request please keep them coming anybody else has any I'm glad to step in and take a look at whatever it is hey did you remember to subscribe